Please read the warning. Good morning. This is your lecturer, Sandra Jikatane. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about transitional environments. And firstly, we're going to talk about deltas. Transitional environments include delta, peritidal flats, lagoon, marshes, and barrier island complex. The boundary between the non-marine and marine environment is a gradual transition. Coastal regions with rivers that do not carry large amounts of sediments do not have deltas. Instead, a system of coastal lagoons, estuaries, tidal flats develops. The dominant influence on this system is the rise and fall of tides. For very low and marshy areas, it is dominated by high tides, but um, it is emergent during low tides. Peritidal environments have many other similarities to deltaic environments common on the subsiding coastlines of basic tectonic margins where relief is minimal. Primary difference, excess of river sediments supplied to the constructive delta, which causes it to prograde, whereas the peritidal environment shows the reworking effects of tides. Deltas form where rivers carry more sediment into the sea than marine erosion can carry away. Why study deltaic environments? It is because it is an important host rocks for coal and petroleum. The small delta in the photo, the Agno River Delta, is a small delta but not as well developed as other deltas elsewhere. The main controls on delta environment and phases are climate, tectonics, and eustatic sea level changes. Hinterland characteristics include discharge, relief, and slope. As for basin characteristics, uh, it includes subsidence, accommodation, waves, and tides. Climate affects the discharge mainly on the amount and intensity of precipitation. Tectonics influences the relief and slope as well as the basin characteristics. Hinderland characteristics determine grain size supplied to, the del to a delta and in turn will reflect the regime and morphology. Delta phases vary depending on delta regime and morphology. Forms of delta. It has uh, an influence on delta shapes. The following are sediment input, wave energy, whether it's smoothly arcuate, Wave action reworks the sediments, which makes such deltaic uh, environment more sandy. And also tidal energy. The Nile Delta, which is here, is the so-called original or classic delta, the shape of the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. It is original because of its delta shape. Deltas are typically classified according to the main control on the position, which is a combination of river, wave, and tidal processes, depending on the strength of each. The other two factors that play a um, major role are landscape position and the grain size distribution of the source, sediment entering the delta from the river. The types of delta are river-dominated delta. Example of this is the Mississippi Delta in Mississippi, USA. Wave-dominated delta. A classic example is the Rhone Delta in France. And tide-dominated delta. 
Uh, classic example is the Ganges Delta in West Bengal, Bengal, India. These are the satellite images of the deltas. A is Nile Delta. B is the Mississippi River Delta. C, Rhone Delta. And the, the one on the deep photo is the Ganges Delta. The types um, are based on dominant processes, for example, in river dominated delta, fluvial processes is the main process that shape the delta. So you can see the different morphology of deltas in different settings because of the uh, dominant process that shape them. This is the Pampanga Delta. The Pampanga Delta is adjacent to Manila Bay, which is the southern part of the central Luzon sedimentary basin. It is a tidal river delta complex fed by different pluvial systems, including Pampanga River, Angat River, Pasig River. These rivers continuously deposit sediment into the basin. The image shows the wide extent of water log areas that covers mostly the provinces of Pambanga and Bulacan. The Candaba Swamp is part of this complex delta. The Agno River Delta is one of the examples of wave-dominated delta in the Philippines. The Agno River, which is the one supplying the sediments to the delta, passes through mountains of the central cordillera to its mouth in Lingayan Gulf for about 270 kilometers. It's, it forms a vast alluvial fan upstream and a delta downstream. The Agno River Delta is active and its latest delta switching occurred only after 1935, according to Mateo, 2006. Note the parallel ridges par uh, along the shoreline, which can also be recognized in this satellite image. In general, the sediments in a deltaic environment decreases in grain size offshore. Deltaic environments show both the influence of both flu fluvial and marine processes, resulting to a lot of distinct depositional environments that can be categorized into three. We have the delta plain, where we have meandering floodplains, swamps, and beach complex. Then the delta front, which is steeper and stable because of over -steepen steepening of slopes, leading to slumps, slides, convolute beddings or laminations and soft sediment deformation. Pro delta, which is a broadly sloping which grades into the open shelf. The position starts as soon as the river water enters the sea. This is because of the sharp contrast in density between fresh water and salt water. Near the river mouth, a subaqueous levee is formed as shown in the cross section here. But beyond this, a distributary mouth bar forms a mound of sediments. Constructional phase in a delta cycle. As river water flows into the sea, it slows down. First, sand drops from suspension in the delta plain. Then silt and clay settle into the delta front. Finally, clay settles in pro delta. As the delta grows outwards or seawards, the sandy shallow water sediments build over the fine green sediments deposited in deep waters. Note that uh, time planes are parallel to 
to the depositional services. This is a cross-section across a delta lobe. Delta slope is gentle, 1 to 2 degrees, and steepens as the delta progrades. Delta progradation produces a coarsening upward sequence. River-dominated delta progrades through several distributary channels, each of which produces small-scale delta. This is a set graphic sedimentary lag of a river-dominated delta showing deposits of the delta front, distributary mouth bar, delta channel, and delta plane. The coarsest deposits are found in the distributary mouth bar and delta channel and fine sediments in the delta front and delta plane. The sequence transitions from the sea to the land. Delta is prograding into deep water. Delta deposits prograded into deep water, slope deposits, and turbidites. A sedimentary lag of a deep water sandy delta. In the section, turbidites transition to, to slope deposits, coarser delta, delta front and mouth bar deposits, and into delta top deposits. Both mouth bar and delta front shows coarsening upward succession of fine grain fine grain deposits. This is a wave dominated delta. Sediments of mouth bars and pro delta are reworked to form subparallel sand ridges, both emerged and submerged near the coast. A graphic sedimentary lag of a wave dominated delta. Pro delta deposits transition to delta front, distributary mouth bar, beach, and delta plane deposits. The tide dominated delta is characterized by numerous tidal sandbars and Madrid's intertidal zone. This is a graphic sedimentary lag of a tide dominated delta. It is characterized by mud along tidal channels and flats and sandbars at the delta front. These are delta deposits delta front deposits dominated by mud and silt and minor sand layers. This is a deposit from the delta front and pro delta consisting of interbedded sand and mud layers. This is the San Juan outcrop in La Union in the Philippines. This is one of the important stops of Jule 120 fieldwork. It is a sequence of sandstones, sealstones, and mudstones, and um, one interpretation is that it is probably the marine part of a delta, or it's a marine delta phases, possibly part of the delta front, um, and transitions, this deposit transitions to coarser conglomerates up section and it can be interpreted as probably this are, these conglomerates are part of the braided um, river or distributary channel phases. These are characteristic features of deltaic deposits. Please read the the details. Um, this is a um, Gilbert type coarse grain delta. It's one of the type of delta which has a characteristic uh, coarse 
grain sediment. A Gilbert Delta, it is named after Grove Carl Gilbert, who was the one who named this type of delta, is a type of delta formed from coarse sediments as opposed to gently sloping muddy delta such as that of the Mississippi River Delta. A mountain river depositing sediment into fresh water lake would form this kind of delta. While some authors describe both lacustrine and marine locations of Gilbert deltas, others note that their formation is more characteristic of freshwater lakes, where it is easier for the river to, to mix with the lake water as opposed to the case of river falling into the sea or salt lake where less dense fresh water brought by river stay on top longer. Gilbert type deltas are characterized by gravelly braided river and beach deposits near the river mouth, steep forset um, um, mass flow deposits, and bottom sets turbidites. This is an example of a Gilbert type delta. This is found in Mindanao in Cagayan de Oro. Gilbert type deltas may represent the sedimentary response to strong differential uplift involving the basin margins and the basin itself. This allowed the development of steep, poor, uh, mud poor, coarse grain delta for sets. This is a sedimentary lag of a Gilbert type coarse grain delta consisting of bottom set four sets and top sets. Note that in all uh, phases, the uh, grain size normally is coarser than the typical delta deposits. These are images of deltas, small deltas in northern Luzon. This is the Agno River Delta, or they call also as Agno Lingayen Delta, which is um, enlarged here. So you can see the plume of the delta. So you can see the sediment that um, that can be seen from from the satellite email, image and can extend farther. The other one is the Bawang River Delta. It's also in Northern Luzon. It's in Bawang La Union. This is the Amburayan River Delta in Tagudin, Ilocosur. Notice that uh, the river delta is also small, similar to the other deltas in Northern Luzon. The next slide is a summary of the diagnostic features of deltaic systems. Um, they are associated with coastal plains, associated with meandering fluvial deposits, with shallow marine shelf deposits. Geometry is triangular in plan view and with shape in cross section. Typical sequence is coarsening upward sequence. To be continued, in terms of sedimentology, the grain size is becoming finer away from the land. Porous shells and other biogenic evidence are common in the laminated mats of the interdistributary. Slumping and subsediment deformation are, are common as well. Fossils, organic materials is very common, especially in the interdistributary where thick layers of coal and peat can form. Shells, bioturbation, and root casts are also common in marshes. That ends our lecture on deltas. Please, again, read the warning.
Thank you for listening.